Hello, and welcome to the Argyle CFO Summit. My name is Brittany Sullivan with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. I have some important information to share with you, and then we will turn the floor over to our esteemed opening keynote speaker. First, we would like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Avalara. Our sponsor is committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience. At any time during today's event, you can visit their virtual booth from the main agenda page, which includes complimentary materials, information, and meet and greet opportunities. We also welcome you to stay socially connected during today's event. For those of you who are active on social media, please use the hashtag Argyle Digital and follow us at Argyle Exec Forum. Also be sure to follow Argyle on LinkedIn for special announcements. I would also like to take a moment to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we have curated based on the feedback we have received over the years from our members. We have worked closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints during the session today, and we truly appreciate our members' support of this policy. Finally, and most importantly, we would love to hear from you. So during each session, we encourage you to submit your questions and comments in the Q&A box on your screen. Following each presentation, we have set aside time for our speakers to weigh in on your questions. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's get started. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Dipti Arora, Vice President of Finance at Circle CI. We are excited to have Dipti with us for our opening keynote titled Finance Evolution, Embracing the Future of AI and Automation. Welcome Dipti and over to you. Thank you, Brittany. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today as the keynote speaker and presenting a very hot and exciting topic. Um, I'm going to do a brief intro of myself. I know Brittany did a great job of giving a really brief introduction, but I want to say I'm Dipti Arora. Um, I'm a finance executive in tech, and I've been in the finance and accounting space for the last two decades, starting off my career in public accounting and then moving into the corporate world. Uh, as Brittany mentioned, um, in my current role, I'm the VP of Finance of Circle CI, and Circle CI is a late stage startup in the DevOps space. So now, without much further ado, let's move on to our topic of today, which is finance evolution, embracing the future of AI and automation. I should really be calling this presentation embracing the future of generative AI, because in the finance world, that's where we are now. You know, we've progressed beyond the automation and really the next evolution is AI and generative AI. And I'm really hoping that by the end of this keynote, you all are well versed in the trends in AI and finance and are able to walk away with at least one actionable item that you can think about and then ponder, ponder on and then implement within your organizations. So first, I'd like to start with level setting. There's so much buzz around AI. Everyone's doing it, right? Uh, Microsoft has their AI. It's called Copilot. Google has Gemini, and they just announced their project Astra. And obviously, there's ChatGPT, which is where this all started. And there's so many, there's so many tools that you all are already probably using that are trying to introduce some version of AI uh, within the tool. Everybody's thinking about it to introduce it into their product roadmaps. So there's a lot of excitement about it. And I'm sure you all are also excited about it and want to leverage it, but may not really be sure how to do it. The good news is that you're not alone um, in that. Um, I wanted to share the stat here, which is really interesting, is that a 2020 uh, work trend index report that was done by Microsoft found that although 79% of leaders are adopting AI essential for competitiveness, 60% of them are, them are concerned that organizations lack a clear path, path for implementation. So we're seeing that there's a lot of uh, interest in it and everybody wants to use AI, but there is still concern around can we actually implement AI? The other, the other, um, the other area is that we also know that AI is a huge area of focus for CFOs and finance orgs. So some interesting stats here are that uh, Gartner survey um, that was done recently found that 87% of CFOs are planning to increase their investment in AI and automation over the next two years, and those that are not are going to be left behind in this AI. Um, in this whole AI initiative. And another, another report found that, um, you know, uh, 
CFOs are actually allocating um, more than 20% of their IT budgets uh, towards AI and machine learning initiatives. So we know that this is going to be a huge area of focus for finance, and the funding is actually being put aside to do it, as we know from the budget allocation. So then what should we be doing about AI, and how can you really be thinking about moving forward with AI? So we wouldn't all be thinking about AI if it didn't help us achieve certain goals. So I wanted us to, so I want us to start with thinking about, you know, what are the themes that are currently happening that AI can help us with? And there's really four themes that come to mind um, looking at AI from a finance perspective. Firstly, AI is helping with efficiency. It's helping us do more with less. Uh, according to a report done by McKinsey, companies that have adopted AI in their finance teams are reporting almost a 30 to 50% increase in operational efficiency. If you think about that, that's huge. And interestingly, one of the trends that is emerging is that Employees that are struggling under the pace and volume of work are bringing their own AI to work. So whether organizations are doing larger adoptions or not, individuals are not waiting for that. Employees are not waiting for that. They're already starting to use this on their own to uplevel their work and become more efficient. The second trend here is enhancing productivity and reducing operational costs. So finance teams can focus on doing more fulfilling work rather than mundane tasks. And the mundane and repetitive tasks are really a prime place where you can focus your AI and use it to really up-level your teams and, um, and their productivity. So another study that was done by IBM found that finance teams that are adopting AI are actually finding that they can redeploy 40% of a full-time resource uh, resources time uh, elsewhere because they were able to successfully use uh, and replace that, that time with AI. The other trend that uh, and theme that's uh, really happening here is, um, you know, AI is changing the nature of jobs in the finance world. If you think about what an entry-level finance analyst was maybe doing now, it's very different from what they're doing over a decade ago. They're, all of these entry-level jobs are really required to, to know how to use AI in the workforce and how to use it to, uh, to supplement their, their work. Um, not that the other people that are not in the finance teams and orgs don't need to know about it. They also need to know about it. But the way the entry-level roles have changed is very, very different. And we're also seeing that there's a skill set gap right here. So you see the stat that's shared here is that 56% of companies are actually struggling to find um, employees with the necessary skill sets uh, of AI and machine learning. So there's also a skill set ga gap, and there's a huge opportunity uh, for those entering the workforce and those already in the workforce to up-level their skills to learn AI and machine learning to fill this need and gap. The last, the last theme here is improving decision-making. So AI is really helping us to improve decision-making, not only by providing us real-time insights, but then also uh, freeing up our finance team's uh, bandwidth to be able to focus more on giving insights, giving more value-added work, uh, rather than just number crunching. So those are four, three, uh, four really key themes that AI, AI can help us with, and I'm hoping you all can use these stats to, um, to present in your workplaces to help you to uh, get support around AI initiatives. Okay. So then, what about finance, right? Uh, finance is really primed um, for an AI revolution, uh, evolution and revolution here. And there's so much new development and enhancement happening with generative AI that probably the use cases that I'm going to share here with, with you today will end up changing and becoming uh, more evolved in the next few months, or some of them may even actually end up becoming redundant. But I did want to share some use cases that I'm seeing right now uh, with generative AI and within finance and what I've been hearing from others within the community and I've used from my own experience that you all can walk away with at least a couple of things that you might be able to explore. So I'm going to go into a couple of fp &E use cases and accounting and some other use cases. I've laid out on here a few fp &E use cases that come to mind when talking about AI that uh, AI is already really primed to help us. 
So the first one on here is predictive modeling. Uh, AI is really disrupting the space of predictive modeling, right? It's really good at looking your looking at your historical data and then using that to predict future trends, future tri uh, any future financial trends, doing customer analysis. Um, it's great. It's a great way to do that. It can help you pull together your future forecast based on the historical trends. And there's a number of different tools out there that can also help you do that. A lot of FP&A tools um, that you may already have are starting to implement this uh, functionality within the tooling itself. It's also becoming good at uh, it's also been good at anomaly detection. This has been happening for uh, a little bit now. Um, and again, this is a feature that a lot of tools have either already incorporated or are incorporating uh, into their functionality now. So anomaly detection is where, you know, something has been going at a certain trend and it prompts you to say, okay, this trend has now changed. Is there something going on here that requires further investigation? Is this something that maybe, you know, from a forecasting standpoint, you maybe might have fat fingered and needs to be looked at and changed. Some other, some other use cases here within the FP&A world is um, variance analysis and commentary. Um, it's great at doing that. Even things like uh, just using ChatGPT, the current version, you can use that as well to do your variance analysis and commentary for your dashboards and your executive team reviews. Um, but there's other tooling out there as well that's coming up that can help you do this. One of the tools that I've heard about and used uh, is Hey Globe. Um, this is a tool that you can use for, uh, you know, to put together your variance analysis and even ask it, uh, ask it to live give you some um, feedback on how things are happening and ask it some questions real time. Um, other great use cases are generating different scenarios, you know, low, medium and high case. Um, you can ask it to put together uh, AI to put together that those different cases based on a base case that you may already have and change certain variables. Uh, it's also great with doing sales pipeline and bookings forecasts. Um, I've used a tool called Clary to be able to do that. It can, you can have it sit on top of your um, CRM and then have it, uh, have it create a sales pipeline and forecast. So on, on the tools, I would really recommend, I know I've thrown out a couple of tools there, but what I would recommend with generally is starting with exploring AI functionality that already exists in your current tool set. That's the easiest way to get started. Um, instead of immediately jumping to something new. I mean, if you don't have that and you feel like there's, 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 there's a gap, you know, good to, good to experiment with something new, but really start with functionality that already exists. Um, and then also a word of caution, right? The AI still, some of these features and use cases that I've mentioned, the AI would still be dependent on your data being somewhat clean um, to be able to do some of this analysis or to be able to do some of this forecasting. So you may need to address that first, and you can actually use AI to try and clean up the data as well. Um, there's a number of uh, AI companies that are addressing the data tagging space. So you can definitely use AI to do the data cleanup as well. But the use cases that I'm mentioning here are somewhat dependent on your data being um, in some structured format for you to be able to use AI to analyze it. Other tools that I've also used within the FP&A space is, uh, I had mentioned in the beginning, Microsoft has its Copilot and you can have, uh, you can now use the Copilot feature with Microsoft Office. So for example, in Excel, if you have it sitting with your Excel, you can have it create a model. You can have it create, you can ask it to just create a pivot table or sort your data and don't have to necessarily do do that so it can save you some time or make it make it a bit easier to do those things rather than you having to start them from scratch okay jumping on to some of the accounting use cases here uh where i'm seeing ai being used uh, in the accounting space so uh i'm seeing right now uh you know uh, a lot of AI being used to write accounting policies and memos. And really, you don't need to start here from scratch and AI can really up level, um, up level what you're doing here. You can even use an enterprise version of ChatGPT to start with this. Um, same with looking up accounting rules uh, or uh, technical accounting rules, or uh, if you don't know how to create a particular general entry, you can actually use uh, something like ChatGPT to uh, to to do that, right? Um, obviously, don't share any proprietary information or any financial data into it because there's concerns around how that's being shared. But you can definitely look at, um, you know, you can use it to um, 
to prompt how to create some of these things or how to write up some of these things, which gives you a really good starting point and you don't need to start from scratch. And this is a big, I found it to be a big time-saving tool um, in terms of uh, writing up documentation. There's also a lot of AI coming around, revenue recognition tools. Um, you know, Trulian is one of the ones that I've uh, heard about within the community. Um, uh, and also, you know, there's more and more, there's more and more within the existing ERP and RevRec tools that's coming coming up where it can supplement your RevRec or help you to automate it so it's not as manual. Um, lots of different options coming in the accounts receivable and accounts payable space as well, so that the work is more automated and it's not as manual to do it as it was before. Uh, there's lots and lots of AI coming around in there and lots of different tooling in that space as well to help up-level uh, people's work. Um, other general use cases that I've seen um, here are there's, uh, you know, I've seen legal and contract review now being done by AI tooling. Uh, there's a number of AI tooling out there that can successfully do at least a first level review. That's really helping our legal team uh, folks and maybe not requiring contract review and compliance management to be that resource heavy and people heavy. Um, other areas that I've seen successfully uh, being used is in customer chatbots, even though they're very, they may be very primitive right now and not, um, not to the level where they're super intelligent. It's still getting better and better even what it was over the course of this year. And a lot of companies are now generally you'll see are using, uh, using AI or some form of AI for their customer chatbots. So those are a few use cases. Hopefully that helps uh, helps you start thinking about how you could use it currently today and then evolve from there. Uh, what I wanted to then uh, share after that is that in addition to the specific use cases that I mentioned, what can you be doing more broadly uh, that can help you to be ready as AI progresses? So there's five things or this five, uh, five pointer framework uh, is things that will help you build a larger AI strategy as AI is progressing. So firstly, um, you want to think about experimentation. A the AI is constantly changing and how we're thinking about AI, even at not only how we can use it in our workplace, but within our product roadmaps is constantly evolving. And AI has the option to deliver a lot of business value, both from the themes that I had mentioned but also to be able to drive top line revenue for, for organizations. And as finance leaders, we can really help CEOs, uh, CEOs and the other, the rest of the executive team understand where AI has its greatest business potential. And the way we can do that is with experimenting with different things and understanding what ROI those deliver. So continue to experiment, continue to try, uh, try new things with AI and pivot quickly as you're learning new things so that you can determine what the ROI is on those and then move forward with, uh, with what you need to do. Um, second is acknowledge, right? AI has its current limitations. So we need to work within the current limitations and then plan to capitalize on the AI um, to, uh, you know, once it reaches its full potential. You know, I saw recently that Google's Google's AI search AI was suggesting to use glue as a pizza topping, or saying that it's it's healthy to eat one small rock a day. So we know that AI has its limitations, right? Um, it's not where it needs to be, but it is really primed to be used in certain use cases right now, and really set up for for finance in the future, and um, you know, in the future, especially from a uh, numeric analysis. It's not yet proficient to do that yet, but it soon will be. It'll soon be to the point where it can crunch numbers for us, and that will be, it'll help us to, again, supplement and up-level our work to where it needs to be. Then thirdly, build. You know, think about what governance structures need to be built to support AI, not only within the finance organization, but across the broader, broader organization as well. Uh, there's a lot of governance gaps right now uh, within the within AI and also um, as ethical concerns, right? So start to build out policies um, policies around um, how how uh, how you want to address ethical concerns for AI and start to bridge some of the governance gaps within your organizations um, so that you can build up more and more on AI. You can continue to experiment, and those those are 
uh, and uh, and you can you have some kind of structure around it. Then fourthly, create a culture, uh, create a culture within your organizations where um, people know how to use AI responsibly and ethically, right? And they're accountable to the technology. Because as we're using it more broadly, this will become very essential across the organization. So having those policies in place or having the culture overall within the organization to, to do that will go a long, long way. Then lastly, you know, drive, uh, drive uh, adoption of it. Start by using it small, um, using it small and in day-to-day -day activities and get individuals to use AI to um, to do things in their day-to-day day-to-day tasks so that when you want to use it more broadly, it's not um, it not it doesn't become a friction point for adoption across the entire organization. So a great way to get started is as I was saying is you know start using it have individuals start using it for smaller tasks within the organization within your finance orgs on a daily basis um, so that you know you're ready and primed. Uh, for larger adoption, not only from an acceptance perspective for your teams, but also they're used to using it, right? They know the value of it. They can see the value of it. So start with the everyday adoption. Okay, so with that, let's make this finance AI evolution happen. And I'm hoping that you all can take have taken away something here that you can use um, in your day-to-day, -day, uh, at least to start with, and then also a framework about how to think about it from the future. So that was all that I had. I'd love to open it up for q and I already see that there's questions popping up in the Q&A. Uh, Brittany, maybe I'll ask you to uh, to come back online yeah. to help me moderate the, the Q&A questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dipti, for such an insightful presentation. As a reminder to the audience, you can still submit your questions under the Q&A tab. Uh, we'll go ahead and review a couple that came through. Uh, so, Dipti, this one question asks, how do you ensure that your finance team remains skilled and adaptable in an increasingly automated work environment? Yeah, um, I mean, like I was mentioning, the AI is evolving every day, right? So I think one um, one is you, you need to, like, encourage all your teams to go out and take trainings on AI, do research on what's being used. Some of the use cases that I mentioned are great places to start, uh, but then also just have them start using it, right? Even if you don't need to have an enterprise version of like something like ChatGPT, don't, don't share any financial information in there, but just have them start using it to um, to do things in the, in the ops world. They can use it to look up, uh, look up things, start writing up stuff, um, you know, just start with small adoption um, because that'll help, that'll really help with the curiosity around it. Uh, that'll really help with like starting people hone their skills around it. Um, so that I think that's a great way to, to get started. Um, and then I think for finance executives as well, um, not only helping their teams get trained, but it's really getting some momentum around it um, you know, just start uh, bringing it to work, right? Like share with your teams how they could use it on a daily basis. I think it's great um, to do that. I see for finance executives, it's actually going to be, um, there's already some use cases. Like I was mentioning, there's some tooling out there that lets you plug plug into existing data structures where you can just ask it a question and it helps you answer that. So you don't need to wait for a report or somebody in your team to do that. So those are great ways for also us to get started as finance executives to start using it and just experiment with it and see what's next. Um, yeah. Perfect. So, Thank you. I think this is a really good follow-up question. Um, is there any reluctance to change from employees when implementing new automations or focusing on AI? Yeah. I mean, there's always, there's always, um, friction and reluctance to any change, right? Um, it's not only with AI, but even if you've probably implemented any new system in the past or done a big, you know, big change, uh, in your organization, there's always going to be friction, um, and there's always going to be some resistance uh, resistance to it. It's just normal. Uh, but I would say to start small, it's harder to make like a really big change um, immediately, right? Like with AI, especially because it's changing and evolving constantly. I would say just start small. Um, just explore even any tools that you may already be using, like what AI functionality is available within the tool, ask folks to start using that, right? With the smaller, with the smaller changes, it's there's always 
there's always less friction than making a really huge change. Um, so start with smaller changes and see feedback, get some adoption around it, and then maybe think about what's the bigger change you need to meet, make, what goal is it helping you achieve, and then make that bigger, bigger change would be my recommendation. Excellent. Thank you, Dipti. It looks like we have time for a couple more questions. This next question asks, how do you measure the return on an investment when implementing AI and automation in finance? Yeah, this is a this is a great question. And it's actually a very difficult one to it's a very difficult one to measure. Um, it's easier to measure with a larger implementation, right? Because maybe you you implement something, you've uh, you successfully launched it in the next couple of months, you've been able to measure the ROI because you've not had to maybe hire as many people, or you've had, you've been able to repurpose your team to other um, to other areas. So in that situation, it's actually much easier to measure your ROI. But when you're making smaller changes, it's it's much more harder to to measure. Uh, but what I'd say is this is where the experimentation that I mentioned is is kind of critical because you can see what your baseline is today, for example, for your teams and resourcing. And have you been able to, um, I think once you're experimenting, say, okay, I we are, we're using this now, which is helping to free up approximately 10 to 20% of my team's time. And I know that because there's these other projects that were previously stuck and now they're make, we're making progress with them, right? So you can find smaller ways to uh, to measure the ROI if you're not making uh, if you're not making a major overhaul or implementing something completely new uh, with AI and automation that you can you can socialize and then rally around it and get some um, get some buy-in on um, on basically doing those things. Great, thank you. It looks like we have time for at least one last question. How do you see the role of finance executives evolving as AI and automation become more integrated into finance operations? Yeah, um, I think the role of finance executives is gonna be a really critical one uh, in this AI world, right? Not only are we uh, leading the charge in terms of changes that may be happening across the teams, but the governance concerns and the governance implications are also ones that we partner with very closely with legal to, to make happen. But I think what's 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 going to be critical is what I was mentioning uh, in my last slide that I was saying, you know, be ready, come up with a framework of how you're going to address those things. So that as you're introducing new AI across your organizations, you have at least a framework of how it's going to work from a governance standpoint, what you can and cannot do with it um, within, within the realm of your organization. And then how are you going to address, uh, you know, any ethical things that may come up with it? I think it's really important to have that framework in place um, for your organization to move forward with it. Um, but then for finance executives, like I was mentioning, um, I think in the first question that was uh, that I was answering is I also see that it's going to make our finance executives' lives very different. Uh, whereas before when we were waiting for certain things, right, we were waiting for a report, uh, we were waiting for somebody in the team to pull something together, we're actually going to get to the point where uh, once our data is more streamlined and structured and we can layer in AI on top of that, we'll get to the point where we can ask at something, you know, and we'll be able to get an answer immediately rather than having to wait for something. So I think it's going to make our um, our decision making a lot more real time and have information, enable us to have information available at our fingertips uh, to turn around decisions and turn around things a lot faster than we have done in the past. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again, Dipti, for such an excellent keynote presentation. That is all the time we have for questions. But I also want to thank everyone today. This session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. Our next session will begin at 1135 Eastern, which will be a panel titled Reinforcing Leadership and Invigorating Your Finance Team. Please click on the join button that will appear on your screen to be redirected, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you again, Dipti. Thank you.